All right. So today I wanted to go over a couple of good exercises you can do at home. Um, um, <laughs> Halloween's over. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But um, a lot of you guys might want to train at home. And I'll blame you because I went to Crunch Fitness last week. Oh, it's like a zoo. It's like a circus. A lot of these gyms are just so nuts. Just busy. Here's my recommendation. If you're going to look for a gym, I wouldn't go to like Planet Fitness, Crunch Fitness, uh, what's the Sport of Fitness. A lot of these gyms are so unbelievably busy and crazy. You're better off kind of finding one of those older family-owned gyms. They're not going to be as nice. There's not going to be as much ass to look at, obviously. But the environment's so much better. You know, I was at Crunch Fitness last week, and it was un. Believable. It was like a pep rally in the fucking place. <laughs> it was so nuts. Um, oh man. So I don't blame you guys for wanting to train at train at home. You know, you go to if, if all I had was a crunch fitness or a planet fitness, I'd train at home too. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I would train in the backyard with blocks of wood instead. So you guys probably want to train at home. I get it. You Can you get an optimally effective um, workout at home? Hell yeah, you can. doesn't matter. I mean, you know, we, all you got to do is stress your muscle. How do you stress your muscle? Well, you load the muscle in accordance with muscle and joint function. There are ways you could do this at home, of course. You know, for most people, a gym is going to be – you know, easier for you to generate the amount of tension and stress that you need, but you can do it at home. Um, so, you know, if any of you guys, like, go ahead, put it in the comments, like, how to train whatever muscle group at home, and I could show you ways that I would recommend, all right? And I, my home workout system has a lot of has the best exercises you can do at home, and it's free with Golden Era system forever. So um, if you want my suggestions for training at home, uh, go to goldenerasystem.com, get the Golden Era system, and you get my home workout for free. This includes bodyweight exercises, exercises you could do with just minimal dumbbells, um, body um, time static contraction exercises, all kinds of things. But I'm going to I'm going to show you guys exercises based on requests today. So if you want a question like, OK, what's the best way to train shoulders at home? I'll show you what I think. All right. So we'll do it that way. Um, honestly, you do a workout in your damn kitchen. Um, all right. So let's see. Recommendations like what do you guys want to learn to train at home? Just. Put in the comments, and I'll show you what I think. <laughs> so what's the best training volume and frequency? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's there isn't one, fortunately. What did you think of fellow Under Armour model Greg Plitt? Greg Plitt model for Under Armour? Um, he was in my agency. My agent knew, was very close with him. What did I think of him? I never met him, but my agent loved him. Said he was a terrific guy. And I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. But I remember when Greg Plitt died. And that was right when I was, you know, I had just gotten into my fitness modeling agency and was getting to know my agent very well. And my agent was, like, destroyed when that happened. Um, I was ashamed from what I heard. Greg Plitt was an amazing person. And... Um, yeah, it's a shame how he died. It's a shame that he died. He's a good person. Never met him, but I everybody thought highly of him. So, so it's a shame. It's a shame. Um, 
Okay, let's see. I've been doing hit properly with a trainer, yet I'm able to recover after one day of rest. I don't get as sore as I experienced, so I'm an anomaly, or should I take an extra day of rest? Well, there are some people who will be ready to go after one day of rest. There are. You could be an anomaly. But my question is, what are you using as indicators of being recovered? Soreness is not a good one. I personally don't get sore. You generally get sore with new exercises, exercises that load the muscle in passive insufficiency or the stretch position will make you more sore. So soreness isn't a good indicator of being recovered. You can be unrecovered and not feel sore. So, you know, um, give me a follow-up. What are you using as an indicator that you're recovered? And then we can explore that a little further. I injured my lower back. Should I continue training other parts of my body? Uh, I don't know. Depends on how bad it is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Lower back is tough. Okay. This is a good question. So if the calories are off on labels, how do you get your clients dialed in? Well, with my personal clients, my VIP clients, what I do is I have a template with it's got a general calorie amount, but everything's based on portion size. So the best thing to do is eat you know, a relatively basic diet. And you, if you want an optimal diet for fat loss and muscle gain, it's going to be pretty basic and adjust portion size. So I'll have a client of mine start off with, Two cups of rice, eight ounces of chicken, eight ounces of white fish, six ounces of beef, etc. 300 grams sweet potato, eight ounces of chicken, whatever. If they're not losing weight, what do we do? We cup at the portion size. So instead of 300 grams sweet potato, we go to 200 grams sweet potato. Instead of two cups of rice cooked, we go to one cup of rice cooked. We just reduce portions until the scale moves. And this is the best way, I think, to lose weight. Structure a, a good diet guide and adjust portions. Don't chase calories. It doesn't work. So that's what I do with my clients, and it works every single time, instantly. All right. So uh, let's see. Dig your YouTube shorts. Thank you. Um, I've got somebody working on them, editing them. I think they come out really good. All right, let's see. This is a pretty nonspecific question, but my college tutor argued against the statement, no pain, no gain. I challenged it to which he belittled me. Was he right or is he a gimp? <laughs> um, no pain, no gain for what? I mean, It seems like in pretty much every aspect of life, you have to endure some level of discomfort in order to grow anywhere, whether it's physically, psychologically, emotionally, growth of wisdom, etc. I don't think there's any such thing as growth in any aspect of life without enduring discomfort. So I think your college tutor is a gimp, simp, cuck, loser. Did I answer your question? <laughs> I don't know what a gimp is, but it's a funny word. Um, okay. All right. When you say you train about once a week, is that upper body one week and then lower body the next? No. No, no. Um, generally, what I do is I train each major muscle group just once a week. So usually it's it has been recently upper body, couple day rest, lower body. And... Um, that seems to be all I can tolerate when pushing to a high degree. So, it, it, you know, okay, so I was talking about earlier in the stream, I was at a crunch fitness last week um, training somebody that I had never trained before, you know. So, very busy. Um, the individual I was training was, you know, a girl with a with very good physique. Very good. Like impressive. 
and um, was teaching her squats. So I'm just like, just show me what you do. <laughs> so, you know, one set, 135, or I don't know, it was one set with 95, one set with 135, and then her final set was 185 for about five or six reps. Nowhere close to muscle failure. And that's it. And that was it. So I'm thinking, okay, that's it. And I think this is the way most people are training. So this individual has an extremely good body. You would think that they knew exactly what they're doing. Big butt, nice legs, unbelievable. She wasn't in the damn ballpark of failure. So I'm under the impression that most people don't train even close to as hard as they could be or should be. So for the rest of the workout, I showed her how to actually fatigue the muscle. One, two sets, you know, whatever she needed. She only lasted four exercises. She was done. Absolutely done. So when I'm talking about training once a week, it's not the way most people do it. It's not the way she did it. Just up and down a few times. And then, okay, well, I did three sets. No, 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 no. And stimulate anything. When I'm talking about training once a week, I'm talking about what I put her through after. Training to, or in her case, very near, but we didn't even reach muscle failure. She couldn't reach muscle failure. No way, not yet. I got her very near muscle failure. She could tolerate four exercises. So when I'm saying I train once a week, it may seem like little. But when you do it this way, the golden era system way, it is not little. It is a lot. Actually, I'm going to put the. And I think this is the problem with most exercise research. And this is what I noticed about exercise research. They never. They use terms like vol volitional fatigue, volitional failure, muscle fatigue, muscle failure and momentary muscle fatigue. They use all these words interchangeably. There's no specific definition for them. So for one uh, study, they could say maximum fatigue. What does that mean? So some studies will say maximum fatigue, which will usually be to the point where they get one and they think they can't get the next one, so they stop. That's a lot different than momentary muscle failure. So it's really hard to, 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 com to compare all these studies because – the way a set is performed is not standardized. These terms are not properly defined and used interchangeably. So what the hell was I even talking about? I don't even know how I got off on that topic. But anyway, once or twice a week, <clears throat> I train each major muscle group once a week. It's all I can tolerate. And if I try to do more than that, I have no strength. And if you train, um, if you train this way, you likely won't have strength to train any muscle group more than twice a week. The end. Um, all right. Biceps at home. There's a couple ways you can train biceps at home. You can use pretty much, you can use standard sets of dumbbells. You really don't need any more than 15, 20, 25 pound dumbbells. And if that starts to get too light for you, you can do things like, Pause during each repetition. You could do things like slowing everything down, or you could simply do static contraction. I think the best way to really train biceps is at home is I, I did this a couple years ago. Get under your kitchen counter, put your hands under at a 90 degree angle. And contract for 30 seconds at 50% effort like this. Hold on. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25. Then after 30 seconds of 50% effort, contract a little harder. 75% effort. 29, 28, 27, 26. And then after that 30 seconds, keep in mind you're not taking rests in between intervals. You're going to sit here and contract against your counter as hard as you possibly can for 30 seconds. The whole thing is going to last a minute, 30 seconds with increasing intensity of effort. That is a great way to train your biceps at home. And um, 
your biceps will be left pumped and trashed. That's what I like to do. Time static contraction if you don't have dumbbells or whatever. <clears throat> How to train glutes and calves at home. Um, calves, pretty easy. Just the heel raise. Hold a weight and do a heel raise. Get her under a squat rack and do a heel raise. To train glutes, time static contraction, hip belt extension. Okay. I normally don't like showing people this exercise because it's one of my little magic tricks, but I'm going to show you guys how to train glutes at home. I'm not going to show you the video. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Okay. And if you want to learn how to train your legs at home with and glutes, <clears throat> the most effective exercise you can do it, get the golden era system and get the home workout for free. Okay. I'm going to show you what this exercise looks like, but I'm not going to demonstrate it for you because I want you to get golden era. To learn how to do it. Let's see. Where is it? Okay. So this is the best way to train glutes at home. Again, I'm just going to give you guys like a, a teaser. Because if you want to learn exactly how to do it. Buy Golden Era System and get this, this video series. It's called a time static contraction squat. You can use something like a furniture moving strap, wrap it around your waist, or you can get just like a hip belt or a dip belt, tie or um, get an eye hook, one of those hooks that screw in, hook it to like a two by four or a big piece of wood and perform it that way. But contracting statically, like this as hard as you can, is the most brutal leg workout and glute workout you will ever, ever do. Harder than squats, harder than medex, leg press, harder than anything you'll ever do. This. Promise. You do one set of this, you're not going to be able to walk for the rest of the day. And that's the home workout plan that's free with Golden Arrow. Try that one. Chest at home without a dips bar. A simple push-up. A simple push-up performed slowly. So let's go back. This is the home workout plan, by the way. This is how a push-up is performed. I like to do it like, like this, so that way your um, wrists aren't an extension. Slow. Pause, ease out. Avoid full extension right here. Change direction slowly. Pause, ease out. This is how you train chest at home. You could do it with your palms on the floor, but I prefer to do it like this in order to avoid wrist extension. Plus, it allows me to do kind of slightly pronated. That's how you train chest at home. And these are all in the home workout. So having sex every day ruin gains. I highly, highly doubt it. I don't really see why it would. All right. Do you believe in joint mobility? For certain activities that you need joint mobility for, yes. You do not need to improve joint mobility or do mobility work for an overall functional body. If you're doing something like jujitsu or gymnastics or Muay Thai or some kind of martial art, then yeah, you should probably be working on mobility of the joints because you're going to have to have a little more range of motion in those joints to perform the movements associated with martial arts. But if you're just a, if you're just an insurance adjuster <laughs> and you're like, just want to get in better shape, you don't need to worry about joint mobility. <sighs> All right, let's see. I'm your fan. Please explain more about getting muscle on calorie deficit. Is it possible with extreme high deficit? No, not an extremely high deficit. You can gain muscle in a calorie deficit. This has been proven in rats uh, even way back in 1975. A researcher named um, Goldberg saw that even in starvation conditions, when the rat subjects were significantly fatigued, 
they would still gain muscle. It wouldn't make much sense to, to need a calorie surplus to build muscle because in the environment, evolutionarily, we never had a calorie surplus. It was very rare. You're not going to gain optimal muscle in a calorie deficit, obviously, but you can gain muscle in a calorie deficit. It's not going to be likely what you expect. You're not going to weigh the same amount and gain muscle and lose fat. For instance, if you're 200 pounds, you're not going to remain 200 pounds, gain five pounds of muscle, and gain five pounds of fat. No, uh, muscle gain is much slower. I would do a small deficit, 500 calories, something like that. Again, it depends how, how big you are. Best workout to train shoulders at home. Show you. This. Again, I'm going to save the video. So if you guys want to learn these exercises, these are all voiceover telling you exactly how to do them. Go to goldenairsystem.com, get the Golden Air System, and I'll give you this workout plan for free. Time static contraction, um, um, humoral abduction, basically. Lateral humoral abduction. So you want to get the shoulder in a position in the mid-range. See that? So you don't want the shoulder fully out because that is a weaker part of the range of motion because it's in a more contracted position. You don't want the arm all the way down because, again, that's a weaker part of the range of motion. The shoulders are going to be able to produce the most contractile force somewhere in the middle of full extension and full flexion. So it's somewhere in the middle. So you find that middle position, time static contraction, contract as hard as you can. That's the best way to train shoulders at home. Okay, let's see. How to do Romanian deadlifts, trains hamstrings when hip extension is a function of the glutes? Because your hamstrings are in passive insufficiency. So they're both involved. But when you are loading your hamstrings in the stretch position, they're more involved in passive insufficiency with a Romanian deadlift. Uh, your hamstrings and your glutes are going to be involved in hip extension with that movement. But a Romanian deadlift is still glute movement. It's just by put by keeping your legs straight and um, putting your um, hamstrings in passive insufficiency, they become more involved. <sighs> All right, let's see. Good question. For best chest development, in your opinion, what would you list the best to worst in effectiveness? Barbell bench press, chest fly, and bar dips. The most effective... chest fly the second most effective barbell bench press the third most effective bar dips that's how i break that um the the barbell bench press can be okay i mean you just have to do it right um i don't have my book here you know your grip has to be right your elbows have to be positioned properly the bar has to be positioned properly it would go chest fly barbell bench press uh dips Why does Elliot scream in the vids when you're instructing him? Well, YouTube views, dude. You Got to play the game on YouTube. Um, YouTube's entertainment for a lot of people. It's informative for a lot of people, but you got to play the YouTube game. You know, that's how it is. All right. Can you tell me your thoughts on pre-exhaust? I'm not sure my mic is good because sometimes I fuck it up. Ah, oh, damn it. All right. going to sound a lot better now. Damn. All right. Can you tell me your thoughts on pre-exhausting muscle with ISO before complex movements? You mean single versus multi-joint movements? Such as chest fly and chest press. Well, the research shows that there's no additional benefit to doing it this way. Research performed by James Steele and James Fisher uh, tested these methods taking each muscle group to muscle failure and they found that there's no difference so no difference as long as you are taking the exercises to failure okay 
Can you speak on the correlation between strength gain and muscle size increase? I'm not getting a lot stronger, but my muscles are not getting much bigger. Muscle strength and size comes as a package deal every time. The muscle gets bigger as a side effect of increasing strength. Um, yeah, my thing. All right, so... I explained this before, but let me draw this. <clears throat> so you've got your myofibril here. Inside, you've got contractile, um, you got contractile proteins, act into myosin. They look like this. The myosin's the big one. And then you have like the actins that go around them like this. We have six actin for every myosin. So that's kind of what it looks like. And you have the actin and myosin inside. So the goal of our, the goal of strength training is to make this whole unit, the sarcomere, Produce more contractile force. That's all your body cares about. Your body cares about the sarcomere producing more contractile force. It wants your muscles to produce more force. Okay, so how does it do this? Well, if we only have one, two, three, four, five, six um, myofibrils in there, then adding more myofibrils will contribute to more contractile force. We've got six myofibrils producing force, producing tension. How do we make this whole unit produce more force? Add more of these smaller subunits. So what happens is What happens is we add myofibrils. We go from six myofibrils, hypothetically, we add, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With the addition of these myofibrils, your body, your, your sarcomere needs to expand to make room for these little things. So simply we're at, we're going from six of these little things to nine of these little things. And the whole thing has to expand in order to fit them. So, muscle growth is a side effect of strength. It's just a side effect. Your muscles have to grow in order to fit more contractile proteins in there. How much your muscle grows depends on genetics. If you're more neurologically efficient, you have the ability to recruit more muscle. You're not going to need to add as much muscle for the same strength gain. If you are incredibly neuromuscularly inefficient, then you're going to have to add a lot of contractile tissue to get the same strength gain. It's been theorized that bodybuilders have really bad neuromuscular efficiency. That's why they build so much muscle, because they're so bad at using whatever muscle they have, their nervous system. You cannot dictate whether you get more size or strength. <clears throat> all right let's see um please make a video about isometric especially overcoming how it affect muscular growth and body overall um okay maybe Would it be beneficial to hit muscles more often not going to failure after a hit session to help recovery? No, absolutely not. The amount of muscle fiber that is recruited and stimulated in exercise is directly correlated to the intensity of effort, not the frequency, not the volume. Meaning how hard I push is related to how much muscle is stimulated to grow. Not how many sets I do, not how often I train. So the worst thing you could ever do 
is reduce intensity to make up for anything. The worst thing you could ever do. Okay. I seem to get way better gains on the chest press machine than the bench. Oh, probably a good chest press machine does address the function of the chest way better than a bench press because it converges and it adducts the arms. A chest press, a well-designed chest press press machine is the absolute best way to train the pecs, hands down. Doesn't mean the bench won't. Doesn't mean dumbbell press won't. Doesn't mean a push-up won't. The chest press is just more effective. Is doing drop sets to failure the same as hit? Wouldn't it matter if the principle is the same muscle fatigue? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. That's high intensity. Drop sets to failure is high intensity training. Of course. But there doesn't seem to be. I just had a damn, where is it? Um, I just had a paper up. Is this it? This is it. I just had a paper up going over things like drop sets. Um, all right, here we go. <laughs> it's right here. You know, I always got this shit up. All right, here we go. You guys see this? Drop set training right here. Drop set training, a.k.a. descending sets, is a training protocol where the trainee performs a set of repetitions with a given amount of resistance to concentric muscular failure immediately reduces the resistance, 10 to 25%. And performs as many repetitions as possible with a lighter load. Sometimes two or more drop sets are performed. There are no specific guidelines for how much to reduce resistance or how many drop sets should be used. Schoenfeld and Gergic noted recently that muscles are not completely fatigued at concentric muscle failure, which is wrong. And the muscles are still capable of producing additional repetitions if the resistance is reduced. They cited and discussed the methods and results of five training studies that compared the efficacy of a drop set training protocol with the different traditional resistance training protocols. None of those studies reported significant difference in training induced muscle hypertrophy between drop set training and traditional training. Okay. So that's the answer to your drop set question. You don't need to do drop sets. Drop set training to failure versus just training to failure. One, maybe two sets. No different. No different at all. So as you guys can see, I don't like have opinions. I don't just give opinions. I read what they say and I go by what they say. You know? <clears throat> All right, let's see. Now, we're talking about the growth. He said, no pain, no gain was a stupid statement. I said, you got to be uncomfortable for something to actually happen. I don't think he likes being wrong. Well, it's funny. So I was doing a video today. Um, I recorded a video on the Delorme Watkins protocol. Let's see if I still have these tabs up. Oh, shit. Where are they? No, they're not here. Um, so I did a video on the Delorme Watkins protocols. So um, Thomas Delorme was a medical doctor that in um, World War after World War II in the 1940s, basically what happened was um, um, Thomas Delorme was because it was weird in the 1940s to train with weights. He was an avid weight trainee, weight trainer, whatever. And um, when he was young, he was, he was diagnosed with rheumatic fever, which is kind of like strep throat, I guess. But it used to be really bad in, in back in the early uh, 1900s and almost killed him. And what the doctors recommended he do is just stay in bed for months. And against the doctor's advice... Uh, Thomas DeLorme was like, screw these doctors. I think they're full of shit. 
and he started resistance training again, and it helped him get over his sickness. So back in the day, doctors believed that anything above moderate muscle effort or moderate muscle fatigue was dangerous and bad for the heart. This was in the 40s. Thomas DeLorme said they were full of shit. So in the 1940s, he started conducting studies on wounded World War II soldiers. He believed that the physical therapy in the 40s was absolute bullshit because they were telling uh, the soldiers to avoid intense muscle fatigue and use no weight at all. And none of them were getting better. So Thomas DeLorme was like, I can fix these guys. I'll just weight train with them. And they, all, and they started uh, rehabbing so rapidly that the army prescribed weight training to all the world wounded World War II soldiers after Thomas DeLorme proved that weight training helped them. So back in the day, they believed that anything uncomfortable in terms of muscle fatigue was bad for you. <laughs> but now we know that pretty much the more uncomfortable it is, the better the stimulus. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think your tutor is just kind of a bitch. All right, this guy says you won't see one jack person doing one set. You're right. Besides Casey Vieter, Mike Mentor, Sergio Oliva, and Dorian Yates, and Boyer Co. You're right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Dude, I'm not you guys can go do three sets if you want. I mean, I don't I don't care what you do. It's just my my goal is there's a huge amount of the population who doesn't work out because they believe you need to do it for an hour or an hour and a half every day. And what they're doing is just not even bothering. For those of you who like to go do multiple sets, the way these idiots in crunch do that are not difficult. Like for the people who are doing multiple sets, your sets aren't hard. Your sets are not difficult. I've seen you. Okay. They're pathetic. They're sloppy. They're short. They're pathetic. So if you're doing a pathetic set, you're probably going to need to do more. If you do a set the way I teach, you wouldn't be able to do one. All of these uh, individuals who argue against a single set thing, well, you're not doing a set right to begin with. If I take you through a workout and put you through one set, you will not make it through three exercises. I guarantee it. I had to pull back when I was training Elliot because I could tell he was about to throw up doing squats. <clears throat> Let's see. Anyone else have any? All right, let's see. I like high reps. How many reps is too many? Well, uh, research by James Fisher, James Steele, Brad Schoenfeld, a whole bunch of other researchers found that rep range doesn't really matter as long as sufficient, adequate muscle fatigue is obtained. I would say too many reps is probably like where, where you're at around 30. Well, it's not even too many reps. It's time under load. So when you kind of exceed two minutes of set duration, it seems the weight is too light to keep the slow twitch motor units disengaged. So when the weight is too light, the slow twitch motor units will start recovering and reengaging. And it'll make it very hard for you to get to the fast twitch motor units based on Henneman's size principle of motor unit recruitment. So I would say around if your set is lasting more than two and a half minutes, two minutes, too light, that's too many reps. Let's see. Which chest fly exactly? Chest fly machine. Yes. Not chest fly for a dumbbell. No good. Point it. Pointless. Terrible. All right. Is muscle soreness a good indication that I'm going to muscle failure? I've done one set to failure correctly. Not really, because over time, muscle soreness will start to go away.
a good indication that you have gone a good indication that you have adequately fatigued the muscle for stimulation is if you attempt to do another set with the same resistance and you can only get like two or three repetitions. That's how you know you completely fatigued them. Anybody else have any questions about home exercises to train muscle groups? Again, the home workout system, it's free with Golden Era. Um, so if you want a ton of exercises you can do at home with no equipment, um, you're getting it for free with Golden Era. Oh, let's see. Oh, the depth of thermogenesis and cardio facts in mind. How much training for a short triathlon is minimum versus too much or unnecessary? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no. I really have no experience with training someone for a triathlon, so I have no clue. I would guess minimum once or twice a week. I don't know. If your audience was all engineering students, they'd completely understand what you're saying. I know. Um, unfortunately, the people who make really dumb statements um, are just really dumb people, unfortunately, with no emotional control. Are static holds beneficial? Hell yeah, they are. Absolutely. Best hamstring exercise for home workout. Time static knee flexion. Um, I demonstrated this for my VIP students last week. Um, I don't have a video for it, unfortunately. But kind of like a Nordic curl, a static Nordic curl, kind of. Let's see. Uh, how often do we train between workouts? Answered that a million times. What do you think about Arthur Jones' hit system? What I teach is a refined version of Arthur Jones, basically. Current workout routine. All right. You've seen the studies on rep speed not mattering? Yep. I think I posted one. Um, in that case, can I just go at comfortable speed, which minimizes momentum? Yes. Yeah. It seems... Rep speed doesn't matter as long as intensity of effort is controlled, as long as you are training to actual momentary muscle failure. Rep speed doesn't matter. Your thoughts on hack squats? Pointless. Um, Drew Bay actually um, explained this. Um Leg machines that load through the shoulders are pointless <laughs> because the point of the machine should be to not load through the shoulders. It should be to load through the hips instead of the shoulders. So, you know, with things like a hack squat or, or an exercise machine, which loads through the shoulders, you might as well just do a regular squat. So when Drew Bay said that, he made a really good point. Fucking pointless. What's the point? The purpose of... In exercise machine is to correct inadequacies inherent in the free way to barbell movement. A hack squat does not correct any inadequacy of a regular barbell squat at all. The 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 an inadequacy of the barbell squat is that you have to load through your shoulders, which could be bad on your back or your shoulders. And the hack squat machine does the same thing. So it's kind of pointless. Let's see. What are your thoughts about Ted Naiman's workout frequency and what he says about rest and recovery? Well, I'm not really sure <laughs> what he says about rest and recovery, so I don't know how to answer that. All right. Website. Okay. Uh, go, check your email. Remember, guys, if you get the Golden Era system, check your spam. If you're using Gmail or Yahoo, Yahoo and Gmail sends this to spam like every time. So check your spam. You're going to have login information. You're going to log in. You're going to have access to the program. Okay. All 
All right, my 12 rep le leg press has been up to two minutes, 40 seconds. Yeah, that might be a little long. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot goes into it. It could be what, you know, what machine are you using? What is your fiber type distribution? If you're mostly slow twitch, it might be okay for you. Um, if the machine has a lot of friction, you're, that could be why you're lasting so long on the machine. Those multiple sets people don't know how hit feels. Right. Multiple set people who think high intensity training is nonsense have never worked out hard a day in their life. That's why. How do I increase load with time static contraction by increasing time? You don't. With time static contraction, you're contracting as hard as you can. As you get stronger, you're going to be placing more load. It's going to do it on its own. All right? So you don't need to increase anything. You just need to contract as hard as you freaking can. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Does it make sense I replace the overhead press with a dip as a vertical pushing movement? No. By vertical, we're pushing up. The dip pushes down. So no. Can we talk about muscle growth and calorie deficit? Any research? There is research. Let me try to find it. Goldberg in 1975 was studying the mechanisms of muscle growth um, in rat models and found that even in starvation conditions, rats were able to grow muscle. I'll have to look in and find the specific part of the research where it says that. So I'll do that and I'll post it. Is only doing hit leg press two times per week for a beginner good for a beginner leg workout? Yup. How deep do you recommend going on hack squats? What about foot placement? Well, it doesn't seem that anything below parallel provides any additional benefit. It just kind of pries at your patellar tendon and your knee joint. So parallel or slightly below, it's up to you. All right, let's see. I recently bought the audiobook Body by Science. I listened to it three times. It said that your fast twitch muscle fibers need seven to ten days to be optimally repaired and adapted. Not necessarily. On average, maybe, but that isn't for everybody. I've had clients that need 11 to 14 days before they can train again. I've also had clients that can come back in two. It's a huge spectrum, just like there is a huge range of um, skin tones. Um, body height, there's a huge range of recovery ability. All right. Some people are going to be able to recover instantly. Some people are going to take forever. Most people probably around seven to 10 days. If you're training really, really intensely. How to improve cardiovascular endurance with weights without running. Be careful of the terms you're using. Cardiovascular endurance is activity specific. Your cardiovascular endurance for swimming is going to be different from running, which is going to be different from cycling. Cardiovascular fitness, cardiovascular health can be improved and will be improved directly with strength training without any additional cardio. Look at my video on YouTube, Cardio is a Myth. I explain the mechanisms of cardiovascular improvements, okay? But cardiovascular endurance is going to be activity specific. Don't believe me? Take a swimmer and have them do the workout that a runner does and switch them. They're not going to be adapted. If a swimmer who doesn't normally jog has very good cardiovascular endurance swimming, goes and does a jogger's workout, he's going to be breathing heavy, hard. He's going to feel like he's out of shape. Why? Neuromuscular adaptation. So... If one is prone to varicose veins in the legs, would TSC be a bad idea? I don't see why. All right, let's see. Just bought your golden air system yesterday. Thank you. 
So I'm just getting into it. As someone who has been doing three to four sets to failure for many years, is there any disadvantage to doing more than one set? Yeah. Wasted time. Possibility of overtraining. More wear and tear on the joints. More damage. So what has been found in the research is that when you are doing a set to momentary muscle failure, we need to be specific. Not if you're doing a set like average crunch fucking gym wannabe. But if you're doing a set to muscle failure, additional sets only produce more inflammation, more stress, more wear and tear on the joints, more time consuming, no additional benefit. Research by Starkey, research by Botaro, um, research by uh, Ridelli, uh, research by Carpinelli. All these exercise researchers found that additional sets done to failure provide no additional benefit, none at all. But here's what I say to this. Do your set to failure. If you feel like you haven't quite trashed the muscle, reduce the weight, do another. The goal of the exercise. The goal of the exercise is to address the, major, the muscle group, fatigue it deep, and that's what stimulates it. You can do it in one set if you do it right. But if you don't do it in one set, if you feel like you didn't do it one set, do another. But don't just do set after set after set thinking that more sets are going to make your muscles grow more. They don't. They do not. I've supervised over 20,000 sessions. Additional sets don't help. The research, additional sets don't help. I have a sample size of hundreds of people. Drew Bay has a sample size of thousands of people. Um, Ryan Hall has a sample size of thousands of people. Doug McGuff has a sample size of thousands of people. Luke Carlson has a sample size of thousands of people. Dr. Ellington Darden has a sample size of thousands of people. <laughs> like the, Between high-intensity training practitioners, there is a sample size of hundreds of thousands of people who have been trained. You know, there's the research, and what they found was additional sets don't do anything better. Oh, God. Let's see. Thoughts on knee over toes guy. I don't know. Here's the thing about knee over toes guy. Does this stuff work? Yes. But I think there are way less complicated ways to do it. Um, he built a good brand teaching people how to rehab knees. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't think you should be bending your knees that much the way he does. For most people with bad knees, that's going to be a big no-no. Um, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. My thoughts on knees over toes guy? Whatever. I know I did a video poking fun at him, but I don't give a shit what knees over toes guy does. Do your thing. Don't care. Does it work? Maybe. Is it complicated? Yes. Be better off rehabbing your knee with just regular knee extensions, honestly. All right, let's see. I logged in with my new account on your store. Blah, blah, blah. Digital. All right, well, I have to send it manually. So if you get the home workout, I go through and I send it to you manually. Obviously, don't buy it. I'll send it to you manually. I can't set it up to where it comes automatically. I'm not going to do it. TSC for forums at home. Um, That one I actually haven't even looked into, honestly. All right, let's see. A couple more. I'm ro rolling up on my time limit here. <sighs> Remember, guys, the home workout was free with the Golden Era System. Go to goldenerasystem.com, and you get two workouts. JC the Pimp. I'm in the Golden Era System, home hit, and trying to create my training plan. Does this sound effective? Lower. Deadlift, hip thrust, calf raise. Upper. Um, barbell row, chin up, dips, push up. Yeah. No, that's, that's effective. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got no problem with that. Barbell row, chin up, dips. Yeah, that's fine. That's a good way to start. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, this is a good workout. This will hit everything. 
Rotate. Might want to do something for the shoulders directly. Other than that, it's a good start, man. That is a good start. I think Jay's just solved every problem I have dealing with exercise. Time to yell it from the rooftops. Go ahead and yell. Go ahead and yell. I don't know. I'm just trying to show you guys what I learned. I mean, that's the whole point of this channel. Remember, guys, before the YouTube thing, I was in my studios, my personal training studios. Come here. My dog is needing attention. Um, before I started doing this, I was in my studios just training people. I, you know... Um, I've just experimented with this stuff. I've experimented like crazy. I've tried everything, thousands and thousands of sessions. Now what I'm doing here on this YouTube thing is just teaching you guys what I found. I don't need to be doing this. I could be in, I could be training people in person. Um, it's much quieter life, honestly. Um, I'd rather do that and keep a private life, but you know, I think it's kind of important to teach this and that's what I'm doing. I'm just Teaching what I learned. Teaching what I learned from my mentors. Teaching what I learned instructing people for years. So that's it. All right, let's see. Where is the fitness industry getting the information that muscle takes 72 hours to recover? I know. Protein synthesis. So what they're doing is they're seeing how long protein synthesis is elevated. Okay. But just because protein synthesis is elevated does not mean your muscles are growing, does not mean you are recovered. When muscle protein synthesis goes down, it doesn't mean your muscles are recovered. First of all, simply increasing protein synthesis does not ensure muscle growth. Muscle protein synthesis has to be elevated to an anabolic level to induce muscle growth. If I eat protein, muscle protein synthesis is elevated. If I eat carbohydrates, muscle protein synthesis is elevated. But is it elevated enough to grow muscle tissue? No. So they found that protein synthesis, muscle protein synthesis, stays elevated for 72 hours. But it's irrelevant because muscle protein synthesis needs to be significantly elevated in order to even induce muscle, muscle hypertrophy. So it doesn't take a muscle 72 hours to recover. It's completely different. That's like saying everybody needs, everybody needs to go in a tanning bed for eight minutes, and that's how you get the most tan. Everybody needs to go in the sun for 45 minutes. That's how everybody gets the most tan skin. No. Obviously, everybody can tolerate different amounts of sunlight. Um, everybody can tolerate, you know, everybody's tolerance is different. That's like saying, okay, you have a headache, 200 milligrams of ibuprofen. ibuprofen. Works for everybody. But what about, no, 200 milligrams of ibuprofen is all you need. No. So saying it takes a muscle 72 hours to recover is like saying there's only one dose of medicine needed across the board. It's, it's so nonsense. It's so silly to, to even think that. Everybody's different. How much sleep we need. Everybody needs eight hours of sleep. That's it. No. Older people need six. Teenagers need ten. <laughs> like the amount of sleep you need every day varies between individuals. So how could you say muscle takes 72 hours to recover? It's all different. It's just all different. Does a slow twitch muscle need to be put under tension more than a fast twitch muscle? There is no slow twitch or fast twitch muscle. A muscle belly um, is, is comprised of a bunch of different slow, intermediate, and fast twitch muscle. They're motor units. There's, there's slow twitch and fast twitch motor units, which is a packet of muscle fiber. And there can be a bunch of different motor units in the muscle belly. I can have, you know, 80% fast twitch motor units and 20% slow twitch motor units in my biceps. So it depends on, on the, on the, you know, distribution of it. 
Um, so it's kind of an irrelevant question at this point. Do you think there's any benefit to including the adductor machine to improve leg development? Yeah, I do. Abductor, we bring your legs out, is going to work the deeper muscles of the glute very well. Adductor, probably not, but abductor, definitely. Hip extension, abductor. Yeah, definitely. If I can recover from it, should I incorporate higher frequency? Only if you want to go to the gym more. So I have a study up here. Uh, where is it? There is a study by Schoenfeld I had up here. Oh, where is it? Is this it? Well, there's a study by Schoenfeld, uh, studies by Starkey, Carpinelli, all these other researchers show that there's no difference in the, the amount of muscle growth between one training session a week, twice, and three times a week. There's no difference between it. So oh, where is this damn study? Hold on. It was just here. Oh, here it is. No, that's not it. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm going to find the study. Volume Ace, can you stop, please? Give me one. Damn. Well, anyway, short answer to the question is frequency doesn't seem to make a difference. I'm trying to find. I can never find this one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Frequency. Um, you can train more often if you want. Feel like it. You can recover from it if you like to go, but you don't need to. Let's see. Best exercises for grip strength to help with deadlifts. Uh, you're probably just going to want to practice the deadlift and practice holding on to heavy weight. If your grip is failing on the deadlift, you just got to let it catch up. But a good exercise for grip strength is um, wrist flexion and wrist extension with a dumbbell or Fonko Ripper. Oops. This thing is probably the best way to train your grip. This. So again, if you guys are training at home, get one of these. Ivanko Gripper. Best way to tra train your grip, just squeeze it. And it has springs that you can put in different positions to increase resistance. That thing's the best. All right. Well, I guess that's pretty much it for me today. Go ahead and get this, you know, if you really want to improve your form size. These are stupid because you can't adjust can't adjust the uh, the weight. 
This you can adjust. That's pretty cool. This is the one most people buy, the Ivanko Gripper. All right. Well, that's it for me. Um, again, if you guys want the uh, home workout for free, all the exercises you can do at home with every major muscle group. I have a bunch of different exercises for every muscle group. It comes free with the Golden Era System. Go to goldenerasystem.com. Pick it up. I'll send you the free home workout. Um, and, um, yeah, that's it. I got a couple new videos coming out. Um, one explaining to Lauren Watkins protocol, one going over the research, all the research I had to do it. People are just got to see it. So those are coming out soon. So, you know, again, like subscribe, hit the bell, all that cool stuff. And, um, I'll do another live in a couple days and answer more questions about a different topic. All right. Adios.